My name is Shaji Kumar. I'm professor of medicine in the Division of Hematology at Mayo Clinic. This is in reference to the recent article on diagnosis and treatment of multiple myeloma that has appeared in the Mayo Clinic proceedings. The treatment of myeloma has changed dramatically over the past decade and a half and patients with myeloma are living two to three times as long as they used to. All aspects of both myeloma diagnosis as well as treatment has changed considerably especially over the past two three years. Particularly the way we diagnose myeloma has changed and that has significant implications uh, in terms of the timing of initiating therapy for these patients. For the longest time the conventional wisdom was that we should not treat patients until they had some signs or symptoms of the disease which typically meant patients would have bone disease or high calcium or anemia or some damage to their kidneys. Now the problem with that approach was that some of these changes could be irreversible. The reason why we adopted that approach was that we had few drugs to treat the disease, the disease was incurable and the drugs had some side effects as well. Some of them long term like other cancers. However, today we have several drugs that can be used for treating myeloma and many of them are quite safe with no significant long term side effects. Moreover, we have a better understanding of the disease evolution and we are able to identify patients who are at a high risk of getting these symptoms and signs uh, early on. By using the conventional criteria as well as using uh, other biomarkers that can predict the development of multiple myeloma, we have recategorized some patients who were traditionally called smoldering multiple myeloma as active multiple myeloma. and have started treating them just as you would treat a newly diagnosed myeloma. This was a significant paradigm change in the diagnostic criteria for multiple myeloma that was introduced about a year ago. In addition to the diagnosis, we have also learned how to risk stratify these patients better. We have always understood that myeloma is not necessarily a single disease because of the significant difference in the outcomes that these patients have. Now, given the heterogeneity, it was pretty clear that we may have to take different approaches to treating these patients. The problem was identifying the markers that predict for this heterogeneity. And even though not perfect, we do have some of those available today. The most important of that would be the cytogenetic abnormalities. In general, patients with myeloma can be categorized as high risk or standard risk based on the fish abnormalities that they have in the myeloma cells. Now, if they have a high risk disease, their overall survival can be significantly uh, lower compared to the standard risk myeloma and these patients need to be treated in a very aggressive fashion with combination of multiple agents with different mechanisms of action. In patients with standard risk multiple myeloma, a less aggressive approach could give the equivalent results without necessarily uh, contributing significant toxicity. So we have developed this risk-based treatment algorithm uh, which has been continuously been refined over the past 10 years or so called the MSMART uh, algorithm. And that is available on the web and can be used by anybody treating patients with multiple myeloma. This is continuously updated as new data becomes available and it always, so, so it always stays current. Now, in addition to the risk stratification, we also have, as I previously mentioned, several new drugs for treating myeloma. In fact, there were four new drugs that were approved for the treatment of myeloma in 2015 alone. Now, we have updated the approach to treating multiple myeloma and in this article we have laid out a risk-based uh, approach to treating patients with myeloma. So patients with standard risk disease based on the FISH testing would get a combination of a proteasome inhibitor and an immunomodulatory drug a combination that is commonly used called uh, VRD, which includes botasomib, lenaldomide, and dexamethasone. In patients with more high-risk disease or more aggressive disease, we think some combinations of newer drugs, which have been associated with this significantly higher response rate, like combination of carfilzomib, lenaldomide, and dexamethasone may be more appropriate. We also want to take into account the fitness of the patient. In frail patients, combinations of drugs with less toxicity um, and which are more easy to take, such as oral medications or combinations of oral medications may be a more appropriate strategy. Now, clearly, um, in addition to the drug therapy um, targeting the myeloma cell, we also have to give significant uh, 
uh, importance uh, to the supportive care of these patients. Uh, the patients can present with renal insufficiency, which obviously an aggressive treatment of the myeloma is the best uh, way to recover the kidney function, but it, we also need to make sure these patients don't get other drugs that could hurt their kidneys. Patients, if they present with significant bone pain, may help it, may have some relief um, by getting radiation therapy to certain lesions. Um, compression fractures of the vertebral bodies can sometimes be dealt with uh, vertebroplasty that can be again um, a significant uh, symptomatic benefit. In patients um, who have other uh, complications related to myeloma, especially high risk of infection, um, may benefit from other interventions such as prophylactic antibiotics or IV immunoglobulins. But an approach that takes into account all these risk stratification, uh, the fitness of the patient uh, and um, using the currently available drugs in combination can give rise to uh, very deep responses in these patients. Can we cure the disease yet? It is not clear from what we know so far uh, that we can cure the disease, but we are able to get disease which is a much, much um, deeper response um, than what we have been able to get with the prior treatments. So what we have seen over the past decade and a half, and again, particularly the past three years, has been significant progress in the diagnosis, the risk stratification, the treatment approaches, both for newly diagnosed myeloma and the relapsed disease, as well as um, the management of the supportive care management of these patients. Particularly relevant is our new definition of multiple myeloma which essentially takes some of those patients whom we previously called high-risk smoldering to an active myeloma and treat them. But it still leaves behind a significant proportion of patients with smoldering myeloma who still are at a high risk of progression. So ongoing studies are trying to see if early intervention in these patients may actually have, uh, have a better chance of curing the disease or at least giving us long-term remissions. So certainly exciting times with new drugs, uh, significantly improved overall survival, and this article gives a comprehensive overview of what has changed in the field and what you need to know when you are um, faced with a patient with multiple myeloma. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www dot mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.